In society's dichotomy, tranquility and turmoil seldom coexist. Yet within every idyllic community lurks darkness few dare glimpse. For who among us can claim to comprehend another's private madness? On this cool August night, as moonlight glimmered off homes dotting the countryside, no soul harbored ill that within hours their placid world would collide with a depraved one, shattering all peace forever. For even in life's most bucolic nooks hide monsters awaiting their moment to emerge. A pleasant day turns dark, it had been a sunny Saturday in the small village of Alton. As children played in the meadows and families went about their daily chores, none sensed the approaching darkness. Three young friends laughed together as they walked the quiet lanes bordered by swaying crops, looking forward to a carefree afternoon. Unbeknownst to them, a hooded figure emerged from the shadows between the orchards. His eyes flickered with an unsettling intensity, breath carrying an odd scent. Promising coins to one curious child, he drew near with a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Before the others realized the danger in their midst, his large hand shot out and clamped over the mouth of the smallest friend. She kicked and screamed muted cries as he lifted her struggling form, dragging her kicking and scratching towards the thicket as she was pulled deep into a nightmare that had only just begun. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeco, where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you. Now let's dive in. It was here, in the verdant English countryside surrounding the village of Alton, that these unspeakable acts took place. Nestled amidst gently rolling Hampshire hills that had long supported farming communities, Alton appeared the picture of rural tranquility. Fields of crops and orchards bursting with berries surrounded cottages scattered throughout the landscape. Near one such home lived the Adams family, little knowing their peace was about to shatter on this dark night. It was in this bucolic haven that young Fanny Adams came to life, a vibrancy that lit the tight-knit community. Though just eight years old, Fanny possessed an old soul whose laughter and charm enriched all fortunate to bask in her radiance. Her childhood games in the surrounding orchards with beloved sister Lizzie and cherished friend Minnie filled her days with joy. But on this fateful night, as the moon rose to illuminate Fanny's silhouetted slumber, no soul harbored the darkness soon to extinguish her tender flame forever. It was a sunny Saturday in August of 1867. Children played in the streets, housewives shopped at market, and men gathered for their usual cricket match. Among those enjoying the pleasant weather were eight-year-old Fanny Adams and her friends. After receiving permission from Fanny's mother, the girls set off for their favorite spot by the river, happily anticipating an afternoon of carefree fun. Little did they know darkness lurked just around the corner. As Fanny, her sister Lizzie, and friend Minnie walked the lane towards the meadow, a strange man approached. His name was Frederick Baker, a newcomer to town who worked as a solicitor's clerk. Though the girls had seen Baker at church before, something seemed amiss. His eyes gleamed with an ominous intensity, and his breath reeked of alcohol. When Baker offered the girls money, they accepted innocently, unaware of the evil that dwelled within his heart. As the afternoon wore on, events took a disturbing turn when Baker singled out Fanny. When twilight fell and Fanny had not returned, her panicked mother set out in search. Unable to find her daughter anywhere, word quickly spread of the missing child. As a search party formed, residents clutched at hope that Fanny had merely lost track of time at play. But in a secluded hop garden, a night watchman discovered something that shattered all illusions of safety in Alton. Among the vines lay fragments of a small body, 
brutally dismembered and strewn across the field in an unimaginable tableau of carnage. The identity of the victim required no confirmation. It could only be young Fanny Adams. As residents gathered clues that evening in 1867, the unimaginable manner of Fanny's demise came into chilling focus. Baker had abducted the girl and dragged her into the nearby hop garden out of the view of busy lanes. Exactly what unfolded can only be surmised, but it's believed Baker first bludgeoned Fanny with a large stone found at the scene, likely crushing her skull. In a depraved frenzy, he then began savagely hacking her small body to pieces with an unknown large blade. Fanny's remains were scattered haphazardly among the vines, dumped like refuse. Her mutilated head left peering eerily from poles amid chopped limbs and splattered viscera was the first grisly discovery that shattered the peace of Alton forever. Local police sprung to action, launching an intensive investigation into the area's first murder. From the girl's testimony, suspicion fell upon Frederick Baker, now the sole person to interact with Fanny that afternoon. Yet when questioned, Baker showed not a hint of guilt or remorse. It was only through diligent sleuthing that detectives uncovered Baker's sinister past, filled with dark secrets that hinted at an even more depraved soul beneath the surface. Had Baker's insatiable madness finally been unleashed in the cruelest way possible upon an innocent child? As the hunt for clues intensified, damning pieces of the puzzle began to emerge. Upon searching Baker's lodgings, police discovered bloodstains on his clothes hastily attempted to be washed away. More shocking still was an entry in Baker's personal journal, written on the very day of Fanny's death, killed a young girl, it was fine and hot. When questioned, Baker claimed intoxication, but his story reeked of deception. Then an eyewitness came forward, a young boy who saw Baker leaving the hop garden alone and drenched in blood. As Baker was taken into custody, the whole town buzzed with fury towards the likely killer in their midst. While Baker awaited trial, the village united to lay Fanny respectfully to rest. Her small coffin, adorned with floral arrangements, was carried through weeping crowds to a ceremony led by the local reverend. After the burial, donations poured in from the public to erect a gravestone in Fanny's memory. Though scared by unspeakable horror, the tight-knit hamlet found solace in supporting each other through their shared grief. As Christmas approached, all hoped the new year would bring justice for the angel so cruelly taken from their lives. On Christmas Eve, some 5,000 spectators gathered as the hushed crowd witnessed the hanging of Frederick Baker, the last person executed publicly outside Winchester Prison. Though the evil door met his end, the chilling memory of sweet Fanny Adams would endure to haunt the village for generations to come. In the months following Baker's demise, journalist Estelle Blackburn delved deeper into the disturbing case. Sifting through records, she discovered shocking truths that had evaded light for decades. Baker, it emerged, had not been acting alone in his depravity. Two innocent men had served lengthy prison sentences for murders committed by the depraved solicitor's clerk. Armed with new evidence, Blackburn embarked on a relentless crusade to overturn the broken verdicts and clear the names of the wrongfully convicted. Blackburn uncovered another tragic case, John Button, a timid 19-year-old who spent five years in prison for the man's of his girlfriend Rosemary Anderson due to a coerced false confession. Once more, Baker had confessed on the eve of his own execution to being the true culprit. Through her dogged determination to unearth buried facts, Blackburn exposed institutional failures that allowed innocent men to rot for another's sins. Though nothing could undo the years stolen from Beamish and Button's lives, Blackburn took satisfaction in restoring torn reputations and making the system answer for its wrongs. In the process, she ensured the evil deeds of Frederick Baker and the atrocities inflicted upon sweet Fanny Adams would never fade from public consciousness or history. 
While Baker's name lives on in infamy, the memory of his innocent victim is kept alive through the vigil of a caring community. Each year on the anniversary of her death, residents gather at Fanny's grave to lay flowers and pay tribute to the bright young spirit brutally cut down before her time. Her brief life continues to be honored, ensuring the real story of sweet Fanny Adams is not forgotten, even as the macabre slang lives on. Fanny's tragic case helped trigger significant changes in British law. Her inquest saw jurors find Baker guilty despite his trial still ahead, a practice later abolished. It also highlighted the need for dedicated forensic investigation of major crimes. Most importantly, Estelle Blackburn's selfless quest to overturn false convictions prevented further injustices, influencing modern standards for appealing verdicts based on new evidence. Though nothing can undo the impact of that dark August day, Fanny's legacy is one of positive reform working to protect innocence and serve true justice. Though centuries have passed, the case of Sweet Fanny Adams remains forever etched in the history annals of 19th century Britain. Her tragic tale provoked unprecedented changes to the legal system while awakening the public consciousness to violence against our most vulnerable. While nothing can undo the horrors inflicted, Fanny's memory lives on through the compassion shown by communities who ensure her brief, vibrant life is commemorated rather than the ghastly details of its end. Most poignantly, Alton retained their bond with the girl whose murder scurred them so deeply. Though the heinous acts of Frederick Baker stirred revulsion that still resonates, perhaps Fanny's profound legacy is one bringing light from darkness. By standing as a beacon against violence, a rallying symbol of humanity's conscience, and an eternal reminder that even the briefest lives leave indelible marks, sweet Fanny Adams continues uplifting victims of criminality worldwide through generations bound by her tragic tale. May her innocent soul now dwell forever at peace. And so ends the tragic tale of young Fanny Adams, her innocent life cut short by chilling violence. Her gruesome rattled the quiet village of Alton, swiftly bringing her to justice. Thanks to the determined locals, her name remains etched in history rather than forgotten. Before you leave, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. This will ensure you stay informed about the latest true crime cases we uncover. We're grateful to have you as part of our community as we explore the captivating mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and vigilant that even closed books still hold untold pages waiting patient revelation. We eagerly anticipate seeing you in our next exploration. Until next time.